Hey, what's up? This is Phil from All That Remains, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey, everybody. Gruhamid here. Wikipedia fact or fiction time with All That Remains frontman, Phil Labont. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, sir. So here's how it works. Uh, we just went to the All That Remains page, your page, the albums, the songs, pulled out a bunch of stuff. I'm going to ask you uh, true or false okay. on some of these facts that happen, facts. happen to reside on Wikipedia. Uh, first of all, uh, I love when they get the name wrong, so let's see <laughs> if they got it right. Uh, full name, Philip Stephen Labont. Yes. Okay. One yeah. L and a V. Yeah. All right, okay, so they, they got, got it. Okay. Um, one of your very old bands. Was this your first band, uh, yep. Perpetual Doom? Yeah, first band. Okay, first, first band. Uh, the original vocalist was Scott Estes. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you took over the vocal position in 93 after he joined the Navy. Um, yeah, I, I joined the band, but Scott wasn't actually... Scott was in the band for a, a, like maybe a couple months when, uh, when, when he joined. And when, or when I joined, and when I, or when Scott left, Ken Roberts was actually kind of took the place of lead vocals, and that was when I first started doing like death metal style singing and learning how to sing and play guitar, and, and, and that's when I, I started doing backup. So it's pretty close to accurate. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty close. Uh, it said in that same year as when you left to join the Marine Corps, uh, you were out for nine months doing mm -hmm. that, it says, and the band actually remained inactive. Uh, when you were mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, what exactly did you do in the Marine Corps? Uh, well, I got through boot camp and I went to my school of infantry. I was going to be an 0341, which is a mortarman. Um, and then... Oh, wow. Yeah, I was going to be humping. And <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I got I messed up on my ankle and, and they were like, all right, go home. Because, I mean, it was 93 and Bill Clinton had just gotten to office and they were making all kinds of cuts throughout the military. So they were just like, if you're less than perfect, just go home. So... Nowadays, okay. they're doing everything they can to keep people in. So it's like, just put some ice on it, here's some Motrin, go sit down, <laughs> you know? But back then, they were just like, get rid of everyone that you can because, I mean, the Marine Corps went from 250,000 down to 200,000 in, in like a year or something like that. Oh, okay. So. How was boot camp? It was cool. It was I, cool? I, I, did, good. I did, did fairly well at it, you know? Damn. It was, it was all right. Don't usually hear people say that it was cool. It, it was like, like, it like was hell. I mean, nah, it like the... <laughs> It's all, it's all mindset. It's all like, you know, it's all up here. So like, you know, I mean, sure, it's not fun to do, you know, to get sweaty, do push-ups in a sandbox, which literally they have sandboxes positioned all over Paris Island. So if you are screwing up or whatever, they'll make you get in the sandbox and oh. get all sweaty and do push-ups and sit-ups and stuff. But I mean, those are the, the you know, if that's the worst thing that happens is getting some sand on you, like that's really not that not bad. Not the worst thing that can happen in the military. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it says that Steve Gonsalves, Steve that, Gonzalez. Uh, who went on to become a paranormal investigator and future cast member of Ghost Hunters, was once Perpetual Doom's drummer. Yes, that's, that's true. true. Mm -hmm. Was he, was he like into the ghostly stuff? Him and Ken were. Yeah, they used to go uh, go. We would go to, there's this Halloween thing called Spooky World in, uh, basically it's a haunted hayride. Okay. And we would go and they'd have like, uh, you know, Kane Hodder was there. We used to play Jason. Um, I met Linda Blair, you know, a Damn. lot of famous people from, you know, uh, horror movies and, you know, you do the line and sign and stuff. That's awesome. And, uh, but Ken and Steve used to go to these seminars put on by a couple uh, named the Warrens. And they oh, were, I love the Warrens. yeah, they were like legit. The like they believe yeah. they, you know, I, now they, I don't, I'm not trying to talk smack on anyone personally. I think that, you know, it's kind of, you know, I like. It's out there. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I don't believe in ghosts, <laughs> essentially. So, um, but, you know, I mean, they were go like from when we were, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, they were into that. And so, you know, the fact that Steve actually gets to do, you know, do that and, and you know, have a, a really successful career, you know, it's, that's awesome. That's cool. That's cool. Wow. Of course, you were originally uh, with Shadows Fall, mm -hmm. and uh, you appeared on the album Somber Eyes to the Sky, uh, mm -hmm. but it says you were asked to leave because of musical differences. Yeah, Brian Fair became available. <laughs> 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 when I tried out, they, they were like, you know, can you do stuff like Brian? And I was like, well, I can, you know, try. And then Overcast broke up, and, and we had been, we'd had a little bit of tension. I talked about leaving you know, maybe six months before. And uh, and then they're like, no, you know, we should stay. You know, we'll see how it goes. And oh, then, okay. 
And then when Brian became available, they're like, Brian's available? <laughs> so okay. so it, it wasn't just like a spur of the moment, okay, you're gone thing. It, it was... Well, no, I mean, it, I'd spoken to our manager. I hadn't spoken to the band about about, oh. Uh, oh, about okay. quitting. So I was gotcha. like, dude, I don't know. You know, I was like, I kind of feel like we're not on the same page musically. And he's like, no, just stick around, stick around. About, you know, four or five months later, Overcast broke up. And as soon as they found out that Overcast broke up, they were like, Brian, come on down. Uh, 2010, All That Remains premiered the song For We Are Many during a show in Vermont under the working title of Dem, Dem Trims. Trims. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> Can you tell me about that? Uh, it fun. was... It was when we were doing the, the record before we did, uh, before we got the, the lyrics done, um, working with Adam, Adam produced it and working with Adam, he, he always makes like ridiculous, uh, you know, versions just screwing around and the chorus and it, you know, it was, it was just something simple and it was, it was one, Dem trims, two, dem trims, three, dem trims, what? Oh, give me dem trims. And dem trim, <laughs> like trim is, you know, what trim is, you know. Uh, yeah. If you guys don't know, it's the vagina. Uh, so, but, give me dem trims. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why, why the change? Just, just to uh, it or what? <laughs> yeah, you know, we, 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 uh, we, were, we were hoping to have, have it not be a comedy album. <laughs> right. Fair enough. <laughs> Though it's hilarious, and I still have, have the, all the, the demos that Adam did, which uh, are great. Future B-sides? Maybe, someday. That'd be we'll fun. see. That'd be good. Um, this one I, I found really fascinating. It said that All That Remains was playing a concert in Osaka nearly uh, around 800 kilometers from the site of that uh, catastrophic 2011 earthquake, uh, and you guys were actually on stage when the earthquake happened. The band was rehearsing, You're so we were doing. Okay. They were doing sound check on stage. So you, were, you guys were sound checking. I was in. The, I was sitting in the back room. Okay. I, I checked my ears already, and I went and sat down, and I think I was on the computer talking okay. to home or something like that. And uh, and the you know building starts shaking, and the first thing I'm thinking is, whoa, it's an earthquake. And then I'm like. I didn't know, like, I'd never been in an earthquake, especially a serious one. Uh -huh. You know, in, in, I think it was, I don't think that we were in Osaka. I think we were in Tokyo, but I could be wrong. Okay. But, um, you know, it was like 5.5 where we were. So it was, a, you know, good shaking. But I was like, no, I think this is okay. You know, this happens in Japan all the time. They're, they're you know, the ring of fire and, and you know, yeah. the buildings are built for it. And our tour manager sticks his head and he's like, yo, I'm like, I, I think it's okay. I was like, you know, we get up and walk around. And, and then one of the... the the Japanese dude comes, sticks his head, and he's like, "Yo!" And we're like, "Okay!" <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. So everyone, oh. you know, milled out into the street and stuff. So, and then you know, we didn't find out how incredibly horrible it actually was until you know later that day or the next day. So, you saw the the stuff on the news about you know the saw the picture, of the, the video of the tsunamis coming in and and just leveling the, the city of Sendai, and it, it's pretty awful. Oh, unbelievable. Um, no knock from the new. Uh, Order of All Things album was first posted by your pseudo account called Harrison Ford <laughs> with a video entitled "You Found Me." Yeah, um, it, it was actually our. It, that, that is true, um, but it was uh, it was an idea that our booking agent came up with. To be honest with you, Josh Klein, okay. Josh Klein from the agency group. He, uh, I, when we did the first release from. Um, a war you cannot win. We put it up on YouTube before anyone, you know, anything could come out. And it was the picture was just like me, Jeannie, and Mike sitting at the airport, like, you know, just being silly, waiting on a plane. And so I was like, you know, what can I do that would be funny this time? I was like, well, what if I took just videos of my dogs being idiots running around, and just made the soundtrack of it, this, you know, made the soundtrack of the video, the the, the new song. And then Josh was like, dude, I do that, and then put it on Reddit on a subreddit, on the AW subreddit, and then, you know, let people go and try and find it. And so, tried to make mm. it a little bit of a scavenger hunt, and, and, you know, it was cool, it was fun, and the dude who won, I forget his name, but he's got, he got lifetime passes to all the Remain shows. Whenever, Damn. any all the Remain show that he wants to go to, all he has to do is uh, call up, be like, hey, I'm coming down, we'll be like, all right, cool. Our management has his, his info, and he'll get on the guest list no matter what, so he found it, so. Very cool. Uh, last one for you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it says that you are a huge fan of non-metal acts such as Sarah McLaughlin, Garth mm -hmm. Brooks, Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, Justin Timberlake, Carly Rae Jepsen, Nickelback, and Skrillex. 
Uh, I think the uh, I think Carrie Under was the only one that I'm not really a big fan of. I like I do like some you know I like a lot of country and I'm sure that I like some of her songs, but I don't own any of her stuff. But okay. everyone else I own. But besides you know, that, yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. I I don't listen to much metal, you know. Okay. Um, I, I nowadays I don't really listen to much music. I listen to mostly talk radio and news, you know. I'm, mm. So kind of boring like that, but that's I guess maybe I'm showing my age, you know. <laughs> but but it's mo that's mostly true, yeah. Would you consider that those to be guilty pleasures, or is there? It's like no, f this is what I love. Yeah, it's that's what I listen to. Like I, I mean, there's only a handful of of you know metal bands that I like nowadays enough to you know listen to, um, and there's only and there's even fewer metal bands that are new, you know that are or, or you know recent metal bands. Like I really like Bring Me the Horizon. I really oh, like yeah. that band a lot. Um, other than that. I don't think there's any band that's come out in the past five years or, or even maybe even 10 years that has really kind of wowed me.